Chief guest, Mr. Shankara Raman, a chartered accountant by profession. He is a winner of CNN IBN Award in 2009. A person who has received many awards from President of India and Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu twice. A gigantic force for the enactment of the Rights of Persons with Disability Act 1995. I invite Mr. Mr. Shankara Raman, the secretary of Amar Seva Sangram, and a stalwart in the field of early intervention to give us his impressions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. It's my pleasure to be here. When I was uh, invited by Sister Jisa for this program, I immediately accepted the invitation because I have been associated with her in the meetings in CBR forum in Bangalore. But what I did not realize was that I was going to be a chief guest, which I was never thought of. Uh, but I got this invite and I saw that I am a chief guest. I thought it was my privilege to have it at this very beautiful and momentous event that is happening over there. I also thank the earlier speakers, um, particularly Honorable Sebastian, who gave a wonderful speech, very thought provoking and very um, empathetic about the issues pertaining to disability. I also recognize all the key dignitaries attending this program, including Jeffrey Maria, who gave the welcome address, Reverend Sister Grace Therese, who spoke earlier and who told a lot about the humanity and the disabled community and also the fact that the disabled community is a minority group. I also recognize Elizabeth David, who is the Zonal Coordinator of RCI. And the HOD, Ms. Bobby Francis of this college. I know this college, this uh, Sneha institution for quite a long time. And uh, they have been doing uh, an outstanding service to the community by developing rehab professionals, particularly for institutions like us who have to give, who have to have good number of people to support persons with disabilities. When I was introduced, I was told that uh, we were one of the key people to get the enactment on Persons with Disabilities Act in 1995. Yes, it was. And later on, in 2016, the Right for Persons with Disabilities Act as well, which was a very important legislation. The earlier legislation had a lot of limitations, but in those days, that was very relevant because the idea of legal protection for persons with disabilities were an evolving subject. And India was one among the very few in the beginning in the entire globe to have enacted a legislation that protected the rights of the person with disabilities. Later on, many things have happened and the definition of disability itself needed a lot of relook. And the various subsequent international deliberations have focused on the disability as an issue of 
functionality of the person rather than giving it a strict definition of what is locomotor, what is hearing impairment, what is uh, visual impairment, what is uh, intellectual challenge, and so on. So the shift was gradual from being a definitive definition of a disability to a more functional definition. So India has to make changes along with that. And now today the act is more an inclusive definition. It spells out 21 disabilities, but it further goes on that any person can apply for being given a disability certificate. But it also says that who are all the persons who will be more severely disabled and more in need of high supports. It also spells out the various other benefits that a high support need person would get. And the specific disability is 40% or more. So we are moving towards a, a more generic society. And the question of what is disability itself is being questioned again and again. What is disability? Is it a, the limitation of a person? Or is it a, the problem that a person is facing with respect to some or, some or many of the faculties? Or is it because of the person's unable to express himself his full potentials? What causes this inability to express the potential of a disabled person? I would not say a disabled person, a person with certain conditions. So the disability as such is a misnomer. There is nobody is that you can call as a person with a disability. But we have to identify certain group of people like me who needs support systems from the society and also an amount of accommodation from the various stakeholders that would help us, that would help people with those conditions to reach our full potentials. So because of that, we have to be given a nomenclature. And so we are called as persons with disabilities. That is fine. Because the international uh, fora, the ENCRPD has defined very clearly and spelled out that the term person with disability is a common nomenclature that has to be used for indicating a person who needs additional support systems to express his full capacities. Now in India, we have, we call disabled persons with so many names and terminologies. We call differently abled, we call intellectually challenged, physically challenged, the new terminology by the ministry is Divyang. So it is other fancy terms, more to, uh, you know, trying to uh, give an identification for people like us, thinking that we will be 
glorified in the process. But that's not required. We don't need to be glorified. We don't need to be labeled with any terminology. It is enough that we are understood as a person with disability. And we should also realize that when we use this term, we better use the disability as a suffix and not a prefix. Rather than saying a disabled person, tell the person as the first one, a person with disability, a child with developmental need, a child with developmental delays. Not the other way about, not the disabled child, not a developmentally delayed child. Because you are not going to give an adjective to the child or a person. You are going to tell the person and then say what the person needs from the society or the, what the condition the person is having. So a person with disability means the person first and the disability is a condition of the person. Similarly, don't say developmental delay child, but child with developmental delays. So it is a question of how the society or humanity is evolving itself. And more as we go, the definition of disability is even more drastically changing. Peter Rosenberg of Canchild in Canada tells about disability. He says disability is a very subjective and relative term. It is the relative incompatibility of the environment and the person's abilities. This incompatibility results into a set of barriers which results into a, some disabling condition for the person. So his definition is very different. Like that, we keep going on on this subject, but ultimately the belief that we all have in Namar Seva Sangam is that disability should not be a constraint. Disability is only a condition. The attitudinal barriers, which I'll be discussing a little later, is the most important thing. It is the perception that really matters. It is the perception that makes people to understand or misunderstand about a person's abilities that you call them as person with disability. We have to have an inclusive society. As the Reverend Bishop said, it is, a, it is not just money and matters. It is a life. All of us have to celebrate, as he says. I very much like this address because he being such a wise person, Talking so much with understanding about disability is something which is, uh, you know, which is what we all want. So a person's attendance or participation in marriages, in religious and social functions, and also a person should have a family life. So a person with the disability, getting married, having a full-time life, should lead a full life experience. So that is what is we all need and we all aspire for. And many of the people today here, the students who are getting graduated, 
through this college has a very important role to play in bringing about this change. The change in the system and change in the society. That is a very important aspect. And I wish all of you a grand success and the college of institutions may have a very bright future ahead. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir, for that, for that explanation on inclusion and its various details of the children with needs, addressing the person first and the condition later. So will you be, I have a question to ask you, will you be addressing us again on the, uh, because we have a 30 minute session with you? Yes, sir. I will be ready yeah, to answer yeah. questions. So I was just wondering because, uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That was really uh, interesting. Thank you so much once again. Delegates and guests, we have come to the end of the inaugural meeting. Thank you for being with us. Once again, a welcome to delegates and guests to the educational section of today. Let me give you a quick session of the day of the webinar on accessibility will be handled by Mr. S. Shankara Raman, Amar Seva Sangam experience on accessibility. The second topic, Access and Accessibility and Barriers of Accessibility by Dr. Anita Paul. Postland session will be handled by Dr. Jayanti Pujari on accessibility in vocational education and training. Now for our educational sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, be ready. A winner of CNN IBN Award in 2009, a stalwart in the field of early intervention, a person who has received awards from the President of India and Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu twice, a monumental force for the enactment of 1995, the person behind accessibility of Mumbai Marathon to persons with disability, an All India rank holder and a gold medalist at the age of 22 in the field of chartered accountancy. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome a fabulous human being to you. Raman, after a remarkable practice in CA, joined Amar Seva Sangam with the dream to develop the models of rehabilitation for persons with disabilities. He believes that disability is a developmental issue and welfare contributors' contributions are not dignified life. His contributions to early intervention for children with developmental delays is commendable and he has to his credit numerous research publications on the topic. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Shankar Raman, even though from the age of 15 years, he stands out tall in his endeavors to raise himself above the bar and contribute to the Indian populace. I welcome with immense delight Mr. Raman to enlighten us on this scintillating journey on accessibility for people with diverse needs. His <coughs> personal experience, Mr. Raman, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you very much, Thomas, for your introduction which is a little too much um okay so uh, shall i share the screen yes sir yes okay so good morning everyone it is my pleasure here i would yeah. have to stay once yeah. again to be a part of this wonderful national seminar on accessibility accessibility is really a very very delicate sensitive key and also most important issue faced by everyone and particularly for people who are having mobility, cognitive, sensory and other challenges including intellectual challenges. Accessibility is an area where people think because of their perceptions and the lack of awareness. It's not at all an issue 
is what people think. Because this is a world where the majority of the people having issues with respect to whatever difficulties in accessing places, accessing transport, accessing information, have solved their problems, but do not imagine or think about what the problems are for persons with disabilities. For example, long, long years back, when people wanted to go to the upstairs, there was a problem of reaching the upstairs. Then they decided to have a ladder. So that solved their problem. Similarly, in recent times, you wouldn't be able to imagine exchanging information instantly with people living about 15 to 20,000 kilometers away from us. People here now just like that, click a piece of button in their mobile phones and talk to their near and dear ones in US or in Europe or in any other part of the world. So that problem of access is resolved. People are now trying to access distant planets like Mars, like Venus, like Moon. They are also trying to continue living space over there. So generally, people, particularly in developing and underdeveloped countries, do not think about the access of people with special needs. They think that once all the problems of the mainstream of the population is resolved, they think there are no more problems. This is the problem, actually, the problem of such perception. So this is this perception that has to undergo a change only then the accessibility will happen. When the lady previous to me talked about her experience in Singapore, and she also asked the question, how many places are accessible in Kerala? Let me tell her that not Kerala, whether it is Chennai or in Mumbai or in Delhi, nowhere things are accessible in the way that it is required. How many schools are accessible in Tamil Nadu? So even the, some of the government schools are accessible because of the government rules. But how many private schools in Chennai city are accessible for disabled persons? I'm talking about Chennai city because it is considered to be a city where things should have developed. If it is not there in Chennai, definitely it is not there anywhere else in our own area in Trinadeli and Tengasi district in Tamil Nadu, many of the private schools do not have accessible ramp facilities, accessible toilets for their students. How many educational institutions are having accessibility? How many hospitals or the health service providers provide access to persons with disability? I, for one, when I was about 15 years old, had my denture right in the corner of a street because the dentist clinic is not accessible. So he came up and he sat under a tree in a street in Chennai city and get it done. And when I'm in school, there was a hectic problems. But they accommodate somehow or the other at special request. But that is not the solution. People provided me with classrooms at, ground, uh, at the 
ground floor level in my schooling. In my CA institute, they provided me a lot of supporting facilities. And my auditor, under whom I did my CA uh, internship, also provided me a lot of access. But the individual specific solutions are not the solution for all the problems, all the people. So there has to be a common way by which the issue of accessibility should be addressed. So there are different kinds of needs. It is not just the physical or vision or hearing. People with cognitive disabilities, cognitive issues like learning disability, people with autism, they also need to be addressed. Their needs of accessibility should also be considered. Now, when people are not even talking about accessibility in terms of what is required for mobility or transportation, the last thing that we can expect is that people provide accessibility to cognitively challenged people. In 1981, when we were in Chennai organizing a campaign for the rights of persons with disabilities, even those days we were demanding for our rights. There was no law, there was no understanding, there was no public awareness. Uh, but we in Tamil Nadu state had a group of people who are trying to mobilize public support and sensitize the government officials. I took out a banner saying that architectural barriers in my board and I went in my wheelchair. Nobody understood what I was trying to talk about. The minister who was invited for the program, uh, he came to me personally and asked me, what is it that you are holding in your hand, architectural barrier? What is architectural barrier? So I had to tell him that the dais on which uh, the ministry is sitting on, and on which we are also trying to sit and address people, we have to be lifted and put inside. So he said, what is the problem? What is the architectural barrier? Then I have to explain to him that you need to provide a ramp. He was baffled. Ramp, how can you do so? Similar experience with the, the election commission in 1998, the chief election commissioner was a very prominent and uh, celebrated person in those days. Uh, we went there and uh, requested them that accessibility should be there in every election booth. And you know what he said? See, there are several million booths in India. And in every booth, if you want the accessibility, you need to spend money, maybe 5,000 to 10,000 rupees. So if you multiply for to this number of booths, you will tell me what is the budget requirement and who will provide this money? That is the question he asked. Today, the story is very different. Today, providing access to election booths for persons with disability is a matter of duty for the state and the state government and the election commission now is I think somebody has to mute. Yeah, thank you. So things have changed a lot since then. In certain specific area like election. But then people general understanding is still a long way to go. Some of the key aspects that needs to be looked at. It is not just ramps. If you build a ramp, people say that it has become accessible, but it is not the ramp. Uh, like the lady, um, Ms. David told, even the entry points and the how you go and navigate inside the building needs a lot of support system for many kinds of persons with uh, disabilities with visual impairment or with uh, mobility or whatever. 
So they have to be, there has to be signages, there has to be tactile floors, there has to be other indicators for different kinds of um, people's uh, needs. So as she said, it's the universal access is the most important thing. So it is not just one group of disabled people being served, but it is the overall, all the kinds of people, whether disabled or even old age people, even uh, pregnant women who face challenges. So the accessibility should address everyone. So the universal standard is the most important thing that we should have to remove the barriers. You have the staircases, you, so many of the other things like the lobbies, uh, corridors, pathways, and so on. So one of the important thing that we all have to face is the doors. The doors usually when, particularly people with the mobility issues, it opens straight on your face and the, you cannot reach it from your wheelchair. And when you try to reach it and open it, it opens right on your face and you have to keep pushing the wheelchair back till the door gets opened. Similar problems are there with other kinds of persons with disability. Other issues are like the toilets, which are the most, most, most important thing, uh, but never get any attention. Even the, I would, uh, I used to say in almost every meeting that even in a city like Mumbai, where you have the, uh, the India's uh, equivalent of Twin Towers, the World Trade uh, Center, you don't have an accessible toilet in any of the office buildings there. That is a pity. So you have another great challenge in dealing with the reception compass, whether it is railway stations or airports, or whether it is in banks, or in um, if you go to ATMs, they are not accessible. The counters are high, and you, you have to talk uh, to a piece of uh, wooden block rather than to the people behind that because you cannot stand up and it blocks your way. <clears throat> so, uh, so many, many times what I have to do is, I have to request them to reach me out so that I can speak to them with my, uh, you know, uh, that's the only way I can communicate. Otherwise, if I keep talking to the other person sitting behind who is not visible, the communication doesn't happen properly. Another important aspect is the illumination. This is also not given enough attention because people are believe that enough light is there. But with the people with the visual impairments uh, for uh, you know high myopia, the illumination has to be much more than the normal. That is very important uh, to uh, have them along uh, in our regular day-to-day -day matter. So illumination is another very important thing. Then anthropometrics. This is the, you know, if you have a wheelchair, it has to be designed properly. It has to be uh, ergometric and similarly many other equipments that are used by person with disabilities, including a computer, a laptop, or a keyboard or a chair in which he or she sits. So they all have to be properly designed with ergometric so that uh, they, they don't lead to more disability because of their occupation and work and the car parking as well. In India, no car parking is there, uh, which is, uh, you know, um, exclusively for disabled people. Even if there are, the signages are there, but people don't uh, obey the rules. All other vehicles get parked over there. Then uh, I'm just showing you the toilet picture, uh, just as an indicator. Um, see, you, you can see here, um, the doors are opening outside. The first two blocks are disabled friendly blocks. And the second two are the ones for other people. So you can see that the doors are opening outside. And the, the facilities inside, you have a grab bar. 
And uh, more importantly, the, instead of the doors opening outside, um, you should have a door uh, which is opening inside that will help a person with disability to go inside. Much better would be a sliding door. And the grab bars, it is there on two sides, but it should be the, the length and breadth and other designs are given here. Uh, but these uh, uh, toilets are not having enough space for wheelchair to move around inside the toilet, particularly the second one that you are seeing here. The first one has a movement facility uh, large enough, but the second one is not there. Most of the public toilets where they claim that it is disabled friendly, having this kind of defects, which needs to be corrected. They claim that it is a disabled friendly toilet and put up a big signage, but they are not very convenient at all. And the flush tanks are inaccessible. The <clears throat> um, tissue paper boxes are usually not within the reach. So these are all the problems, even in accessible <laughs> India. Then coming to the other aspect of the attitudinal barriers, this is the most important one. The physical barriers can be corrected somehow or the other, but the attitudinal barriers are the ones which are most important, which needs an immediate attention. And if this is corrected, the rest of the things automatically will happen. The inclusion of a person with disability depends entirely on how they are looked upon by the people and the stakeholders. Many of the problems is that the people that we are being uh, sympathized and that we are looking <laughs> the help. They don't think that uh, we need empathy. They don't uh, they need to create an environment that will help us to be independent. So they think that we are always dependent and we should be supported and helped. In this, what happens is they think that we are not uh, capable of delivering. We, they think that uh, we will be unproductive and we will be a burden. So this aspect has to absolutely change. <clears throat> they should, the people should be made to realize that the, the disability is not because of what the people look like or what the perceived function is. It should be more look like that, how much their abilities can be related to the facilities that are being offered. So that's why I even told in my earlier address that the, the term disability is a relative and it is subject to the ability of the environment to recognize the abilities of the person. So if there is an incompatibility between what the environment can offer and what the person has in his potential or in her potential, there comes the barrier and that is what is causing the disability. So it is a question of the environment that is most critical in making a person disabled or not. It is not the person's look or his uh, functions that are being compared with other people. I am a person with muscular dystrophy. I was born with that and from age three I am diagnosed with that <clears throat> and by age 15 I am in a wheelchair. But being in a wheelchair with so much of supports I could have very well ended up with a corner of a room doing nothing. But then what made me to become a chartered accountant? What made me to lead an organization like Amarsila Sangam? Why am I now talking to you? This is all because my parents offered me the opportunities. They never thought that I should be a disabled person. They gave the early intervention in my young age, let all of you realize the importance of early intervention. Secondly, I was in a regular school. There was no special school in those days. In 
2 to 38, I was doing a regular in a village. Earlier in Ranipet, later on in Chidambaram. Both are in rural areas. I did my schooling. Then only we came back to Chennai. Then what happened? With the attitude of my auditor, who provided me the opportunity, and also the institute, which gave me some solutions. Because of that, I became like what I am today. And after that, I challenged the officials. Whenever I did my practice, the officials never uh, understood my abilities. They thought that I am after all a person in a wheelchair, what do I know? They even said, why you are coming? You could have sit in your office. But then that was not the case. I proved that uh, I, I have the capability, I, I can't do it. I am provided with uh, caregivers. I am provided with persons who can assist me and lift me. It is this uh, uh, facility, the caregivers and uh, escort providers that make a person with uh, severe uh, disabilities or with a high support needs to be independent, not only independent to be selfish, but to be uh, contributory and uh, get to the full potentials. That is the most important thing. So it is the attitude and the kind of environment that is provided to you that makes you what you are, apart from your own initiative and apart from your own mindset. So this attitudinal barrier has to be given most important um, uh, place in our strategy in making the rehabilitation of any person with any kind of disability. Access, attitude, choice, partnerships, communications, policy, policy of the government, opportunities provided by the society. Choice should be given to the person. The choice should not be imposed. Anything should be at the choice of the person. Because of disability, you cannot force a person to take a decision. So in our organization, we look at it in a holistic manner. We give importance to the inclusiveness because ultimately it is inclusive society that is what is required. The family and parents are involved, awareness to the community is given, and we use a technology in a very big way to provide solutions. And we look at the, the challenge as a change requirement in the system itself. It is not a one individual person getting rehabilitated or one set of community is getting better, but we have to establish a perpetual system whereby the solutions are there forever. This is the reason why we always try to collaborate with all stakeholders whether it is government or corporate or business houses or educational institutions or any other organizations, uh, NGOs, we want to collaborate with them so that the person with disability gets the necessary systems requirements that will enable him or her to reach her potential and contribute to the society. So these are all the four major pillars on which we work. The rehabilitation is the initial stage of making the person enabled and the education is key input. Without education, nothing will happen. Then training is important for their uh, livelihood. Uh, social inclusion is ultimately what we try to uh, achieve. So our usually our uh, major way of doing thing is that we train the mother or the caregiver and make them involved. Then our workers are dedicated for their education, training, and awareness. Then we use the GPS technology. So with that, we complete all the uh, virtual cycle of the rehabilitation process. And we look at the disability rehabilitation as more a social and rehabilitation issue 
rather than a mere medical issue. So we enable them, we educate them, we provide them with independent living skills. This is the way by which we try to make them able, providing them with caregiving and escort services that would make them independent for people who require such uh, services so that they can reach their full potential and they're using the technology as the key. And this is how we collaborate with various stakeholders and our graph shows how much is our reach and uh, how much we, the people, the alumni who have gone out of this organization have reached their levels in their life. And these are some of the indicators and in the research studies. So we believe that no child should be denied of schooling experience because of disability. I say schooling experience because it is not just school en enrollment. The child has to experience the school. The child has to attend the school regularly. Okay, sir. Thank you if so much, sir. If there are any questions, you can still ask yeah, me. Yeah. Um... Participants, do you all have any questions? Uh, you were talking about architectural barriers. Design, which I thought was very good because I'm seeing it for the first time. Sir, all this goes in line with universal design? Um, yeah, mostly, but it is still an evolving subject. <laughs> yeah, it is still an evolving subject and uh, people are trying to reach to the universal level. Okay. Participants, do you all have any questions for sir? Sir, I think uh, there is uh, nothing in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that yeah, wonderful session. If anything session. comes up later, you just inform me. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll send you a mail uh, from here. Thank you yeah. so much, sir. That was a wonderful uh, and enlightening session, especially the access route was very interesting. Uh, how do we really in India beat uh, the attitudinal barriers? What is What are your thoughts on it? Have we improved from what you've seen in the last couple of, uh, you know, in a decade, have we changed a little bit on our attitudes with, uh, you know, on, on the attitude of uh, people at large? Yeah, the attitudes are changing, but it is not changing uh, to the extent that is required. Um, things are changing fast in the Western countries in US, and even in many of the uh, other Asian countries. Uh, but I, I don't know why in India, people are uh, not so quickly adapting to the new concepts and changes. Uh, they are still not able to comprehend fully the potentials of a person with disability. They still look at uh, all of us as a, as a person to be sympathized. And they are not uh, looking at the facilities to be provided or opportunities to be given. Uh, so everything in India is that you have to give, put it in an act and force it upon the people. And uh, that is not the way to make a society to change. Um, you know, like, then you have to keep on following the compliance with the act. So that becomes more important than providing the required services or facilities for the disabled. So I think there is a long way to go in terms of uh, the attitudinal changes. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, uh, to all the participants, we, you were listening to uh, Mr. Shankara Raman. So it was a wonderful and enlightening session, sir. Thank you so much. On behalf of all the staff, uh, Sneha Southern College of Special Education, I thank you from the bottom of all our hearts and thank you so much and you have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you.